Hello and welcome to Deutschland. This is a story of the 1974 World Cup. So some of football's most successful nations did not qualify for this tournament. England, France, Mexico, Spain, Portugal, Peru, Belgium, Czechoslovakia, Hungary and Romania. None of them qualified. The USSR was disqualified after the Chilean president was ousted in 1973. The Netherlands and Poland qualified for the first time since 1938. Scotland was back in the finals after the last appearing in 1958. Argentina and Chile were back after missing the last tournament. And Yugoslavia was back after missing the last two tournaments. East Germany for the first time qualified. This was their only major tournament appearance as a separate team. Australia, the first ever team from Oceania to qualify. Although they would not qualify again till 2006, the next time the tournament was held in Germany. Haiti was the first Caribbean team to qualify since Cuba, th that's 36 years earlier, and Zaire, or currently called the, Dem the Democratic Republic of the Congo, became the first team from Sub Saharan Africa to reach the finals. As of 2018, this is the last time that Haiti and Zaire qualified for a FIFA World Cup tournament, the last time Spain failed to qualify. And yeah, no Asian teams win in this World Cup. Okay, now back to the tournament. The draws were actually done by an 11 year old boy, Detlef Lange, a member of the Schoneberger Sanger Naven, which is a children's squad. The great sensation of the draw was the meeting of the two German teams in Group 1. So that was fun. Yeah, so only one game has ever been played between East Germany and West Germany. That happened in this World Cup. And East Germany won. It was a stunning result. Which really showed that the communist countries are not inferior to the Western bloc in any ways. Like if they can beat them in football, why not in real life? I, I can tell there are so many people that are going to be angry with me for saying that. Yeah, whatever it was, that did not affect West Germany. They had won their previous two games, but East Germany did advance without a loss. Now, this World Cup worked a little bit differently. There were four groups of four teams each, but the top two teams from each group qualified for the second group stage, where they were split into two groups of four teams each. And the top teams from and uh, the top team from both of those groups would meet in the final. The second place teams would meet in the third place playoff. That's very complex. It was only used for two World Cups, thankfully. In Group 2, Zaire was the only team who went out without a single point. I mean, what a surprise. However, one of the biggest World Cup victories occurred in this group. Yugoslavia beat Zaire 9 0. It was an absolute embarrassment. In fact, the dictator of Zaire at the time flat out said, Guys, if you lose the next game by more than four goals, yeah, we ain't letting you back in our country. So that's fun. Scotland, oh, so close yet so far. It was two goals. If they had gotten two extra goals against Zaire or one extra deadlock breaker against Yugoslavia, that would have sent them to the second round of the World Cup and broken their long streak of bad luck. Alas, it was not to be. Scotland was eliminated on goal difference. The Netherlands and Sweden qualified from Group 3, but a real surprise was that the 1970 semi finalist Uruguay failed to qualify. Haiti was absolutely beaten up like a drum. Lost 7 0 to Poland and 4 1 to Argentina in their last two games. They also exited without a single point. Poland and Argentina qualified. In Group A, the Netherlands. Oh, how could I not mention the Netherlands? They, had, they played in magnificently in this World Cup. Rhinus Michaels. I, this, he is one of the football coaches whom I will always admire. For his philosophy of total football, apart from the goalkeeper, no player had a fixed position. Run around the field. It was a high pace possession based game. Which uh, if it was if they, it was in use today, I would have loved to watch. Johan Cruyff actually uh, used a similar method, like similar to Tiki Taka, 
when he did manage Barcelona uh, like 20 years later. So yeah, you can say that this is the earliest precursor to Tiki Daka that we have right now. Okay then, back to the results. The Netherlands destroyed Argentina 4-0 at the Park Stadion in Gelsenkirchen. The Niedersachsen Stadion saw two great games. Brazil's 1-0 win against East Germany and then a 2-1 win against Argentina. The last game was between the Netherlands and Brazil. The Netherlands ended up winning that game 2 to nothing with goals from Johan Nieskins and Johan Cruyff. Yeah. In the second group, West Germany qualified quite easily. They won all three matches. In the third place playoff, Poland with one of their biggest ever footballing achievements, a goal from Grzegorz Lato. If I have any Polish viewers, please tell me how you say that guy's first name. It's really complex. Please. Okay then. Johannes Nienskins actually gave the Netherlands the lead very early on with a penalty in the second minute of the final against West Germany. But in the 25th minute, Paul Breitner equalized also from a penalty and that was followed up by a winner from Gerd Müller shortly before halftime. It's one of the all-time greatest teams ever assembled in the World Cup or otherwise, but sadly, it would never see any major victories. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of this stuff, please like the video and subscribe so that I know that you want this stuff.